Evening ladies and gents, it's Simon Brown here doing this evening's webinar. This evening looking at, at what I've called my lazy trading system for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being that it's my system, it's lazy, it's designed to be simple. We we'll run it about half an hour, we'll certainly take questions. You can use the uh, integrated uh, question box within the GoToWebinar application. Um, I've managed to get my other half of the audio working, so if you've got a microphone attached, we can take audio questions from your side at the same time. Um, just a, 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 an extra level of, of, of disclaimer in that we're not offering advice, we're showing systems and the logic being, I'm going to come to it in more detail to really make it your own, to test it. To, to find out if the system is working uh, for you. Everyone's got different requirements, different risk profiles, different stress levels and the like. And, and certainly I designed this to try and be nice and simple. There is a video uh, online at just one lap on how to test a trading system. I always say to folks, you know, I used to include this in, in, the, in my trade to trade world course. Uh, hundreds if not thousands of people have been exposed to this. It's also on Ticker Talk. It's not easy to just uh, innately go away and trade somebody else's system. You need to go and test it. You need to be able to trust it. That's how we get discipline in a system. It comes from trust, and trust quite simply comes from testing it. So we've done a video that will really go and explain to you uh, uh, how to make it work, how to test, uh, test something. Uh, some questions coming through. Roger, will it be available after the webinar? Yeah, it will be up as a video probably by lunchtime tomorrow. The system will auto-generate an email to everybody who booked uh, and attended, and that email will be sent out at about 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Certainly the video will be online for viewing and for downloading by tomorrow evening, that being Thursday. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a simple and lazy system. And when I say simple, I really, really mean simple. We use three moving averages. Um, it is deadly simple. And by lazy, I mean that we don't need to spend our days in front of a screen. We want to make money from the market. Absolutely, of course, we do. In truth, we want to make uh, better returns than the market is offering. Uh, and if we're going to use gearing, we want to use, make money on the down as well as on the up. The point being is we don't want to spend 12 hours a day in front of our computer screens. That defeats the whole purpose. So this system was designed where it is an end-of-day system. And when it's, when it's running smoothly, and, and most of that smoothness really comes from me more than the system. When it's running smoothly, it is literally a couple of minutes a day. Uh, a busy day where you might have a whole lot of trades to do, um, and that might be as many as three to get in or out of. Maybe it's taking as much as 10 minutes, a uh, bit of time at 4.30, and again at about 6 or 7 when you check your charts. It really is designed to be simple. It is a uh, primary trend trading system. We look for primary trend when it reverts back to that primary trend. In other words, big picture up, small picture down. When that small picture reverts back to up, we enter the trade. And the logic there is, is really quite simple. You want to catch those trends as soon as possible and ride them for as long as possible. Of course, that means in a sideways market, as we've seen in the top 40 uh, for, for much of this year, it bleeds money. And I'll go into that in more detail. It is an end-of-day system. In other words, we don't need to worry about it during the course of the day. We don't need to monitor intraday charts. We only need end-of-day charts. Um, and it trades indices only. And that's a, a very important point. I've vaguely played with it on, on stocks. I first started trading this system uh, back at the beginning of 2004. Five, um, and I, I, at some point I looked at it for trading stocks. It didn't seem to work very well. And the issue, I think, quite simply, is that shares are more volatile, indices are less volatile. And I, I like less volatility. Um, so typically it would work on the top 40, Resi 10, Fini 15, and Indy 25. And I picked those four because you can get uh, uh, Satrix products or exchange-traded funds on them. So if you want to trade the Resi, Fini, or Indy, you can go and buy the ETF. Of course, in the top 40, you've got a lot of options. You could trade Aussie futures. I haven't tried it on Aussie futures. Uh, you could trade the, the, the ETF products, and there are three different top 40 ETF products from Stanlib, RMB, and Satrix, respectively. Uh, and of course, you could trade warrants. It can be trade, traded geared or ungeared. In other words, you can simply trade it where you go and buy the relevant Satrix product, or if you want, you can trade with gearing, and you would then likely use a CFD in that position. 
the, the, the CFD obviously adds a potential reward. It also adds potential risk. Absolutely it does. As I said, I'm primarily trading it with ETFs. I am using gearing, although I've stepped my level of gearing to around uh, two and a half times the index. Um, it is uh, a system which I monitor at uh, tickettalk.coza, which is a, a kind of like aggregate blogging website, which I have a minority stake in for full disclaimer, but more importantly than that is if you go there and you check on the top left, you will see a link to Simon's Lazy Trading. Um, and I update it there, uh, not as religiously as I should, but certainly from time to time, and I'm more than happy to answer follow-up questions either there or by email. I like questions there because then obviously there's a record so that if other folks have got questions, uh, they can find the answers nice and easy. Some more details. It gives a small number of signals, hence it, the lazy system in a sense. It averages about one a month uh, and in truth that number can drop and rise, but certainly over the years it seems to uh, uh, give about one a month. It can result in trades that can go on for literally months. I think if memory serves me correct, at the end of 2009 it put me into the trade in the Indy 25 which ran for three and a half months. Point is, the ND25 constantly went up. It added 25% over that period. As long as it was going in my direction, I was more than happy to be in the trade. Because it's a trend-based system, because it needs markets to be going up or down, when markets go sideways, this system bleeds money. And I will show you a direct example of that. I'm going to, towards the end of this webcast, I'll haul up the, the four different charts and we can actually delve into and we can look at them and, 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 and really analyze where the entry and exits were because I mean, a picture is significantly easier than a, a text explanation in my view. Um, but sideways markets hurt. The point is that markets don't go sideways for long. Okay. And so far this year, uh, a market hit a high on January 17. Today I closed a couple of hundred points off that high. Uh, we've gone sideways for over three months now. It will break sooner or later, up or down. Of course, the system might miss that initial break, but then it will come back and, and come with another one. And that you know, is always the point of trading. It's about that discipline. But certainly, it's not designed for a sideways market. I haven't bothered to put filters into it that will uh, reduce the risk in sideways markets because they tend not to happen too much. Just a bit of background, when I started trading it in 2005, we were obviously entering that massive bull market, uh, five, six, seven, it absolutely was a, a breeze to make money off it, um, and then eventually in time, uh, when the turn came, and it was the first time we'd really had a turn in the market, it then, it started a bit when the turn happened, but it caught quite quickly, and then in 2008 and 9 was putting us into short trades until that turn up happened. Uh, folks, I see a couple of people raising hands uh, in the application. If you're wanting to ask questions, put them in the text box for now. Um, I'll take questions on the fly. I'll take audio questions at the end of the webinar. So how do we do it? What are we looking at? What's important? First point is find that primary trend. What is the, the big picture trend that we're looking for? In other words, is the market broadly going up? or broadly going down. And of course, when it's going sideways, it's going to get confused and tell you different different uh, uh, stories behind it. But you find that, that primary direction of the trend, and then you only trade in that direction of that trend. That's the critical part. So if the primary trend is up, you're only looking to take long trades. You're only looking to make trades on the upside, not interested in downside trades. After we get a pullback against the trend, that would be the secondary trend, we end to win back in the primary trend. So as I said a moment ago, if the big picture is up and the small picture starts going down and then reverts back up, i.e. that secondary trend, call it secondary trend or small picture, reverts back up, we would look to enter a long trade on confirmation. And in truth, I have a, a, a two-step, I get the trigger and then I enter the next day on confirmation. But I will detail that in a moment. How do we define the trends? Simple enough. A primary trend is a simple moving average. It's two of them and it is relative to each other. That's a very important point. It's not relative to price. When we're looking for the primary trend, we merely look for the two moving averages relative to each other and that will determine the direction that we trade. I use the 30 and 60 day simple moving averages. 
I, I, I've played with the exponentials and other moving averages. They didn't make any significant difference, so I stuck with the simple. If the 30-day moving average is above the 60, I say the trend is up, and we're only taking long trades. If the 30 moving average is below the 60, I say that the trend is down, and we would only take short positions. So the first thing you do when you look at your chart is you look at your 30 and 60 day moving average and you say, what is my big picture? What is my primary trend? If your primary trend is up, then you would only trigger on a buy. And if your primary trend is down, you would only trigger on a sell. If you're not trading derivatives, of course you simply can't then uh, be trading in that space because you can't go short of Satrix or the ETS without derivatives. You can, but it's a, you, you need prime broking. It's a little bit complicated. The secondary trend, key difference here, still a moving average. But here I look at the moving average relative to price. On the primary trend, I looked at the moving averages relative to each other. Here I look at them relative to price. So what am I doing? I'm using a 15-day simple moving average. And I'm saying, if price is above 15-day, then that secondary trend is up. And if price is below 15-day, then that secondary trend is down. What I actually do for the, the, the trigger is I'll wait for the move. So let's say we've got the primary trend is up. The 30 is above the 60. Big picture is up. And currently, price is below the 15-day. So primary trend is up. Secondary trend is down. Price then goes from below to above. In other words, the secondary has gone from a downtrend to an uptrend. It has realigned itself with that primary trend. And at that point, that would then be my trigger. I then add an extra step of security, and I say I will enter the next day if we close green. And what I essentially do is enter the trade at 4.30, because that means that I've got a realistic expectation of being able to know if the market is going to be green or not. Essentially, what I do is I log on, or I contact my broker's call center, and I say, is the market green? Uh, if they say yes, I enter the position. So that process, as I said, determine if primary trend is up or down. If up, wait for price to cross up through 15-day uh, simple moving average. There is your trigger. And say that were to happen on a Tuesday close, because we do this end of day. Confirmation would be next day, Wednesday. If green, I then enter, but only on a green close. Now, I can't, if the market closes at 5 o'clock, I now can't enter it. So obviously, I've got to preempt that a bit, so I enter at 4.30. That does bring a small element of risk, and I do have at least one trade in memory where I entered the position at 4.30 because it was confirming, and it managed to unconfirm itself, I suppose. And the point is, in other words, it didn't close green. It closed red for the day. The point is not how much green. If it's green by one point, then I'm in, because then it is the confirmation. And, and that's the point of, of system trading, which I very much am, and which this very much is, is that I'm simply trading the rules. Now, you could say, no, you want it to be green by a tenth of a percent, or by half a percent, or by a hundred points. That's your call. For me, green is green, I enter. And of course, inverse, if we're going short. My exit... Without a shadow of a doubt, the hardest part of trading is exiting the trade. Um, so what do I do? I only exit on stop loss end of day. I don't exit intraday, and I don't exit at target. I'm never a fan of, of target uh, uh, selling, simply because your risk is quite simple. So you get into a trade, and it moves 5 or 6%, and you think, that's excellent. So you exit. And it ends up that that move was 20 or 30 or 40%, and you left the vast majority of the profit on the table. So I'll let the market take me out. There are risks with this, and I will delve into those risks in detail. I use the lower lows if long or the higher highs if short. Uh, let me get some... What do I mean by that? So let's go back a step to, to uh, lower lows. So... Market is moving up. I am currently long this position, um, and I'm long. I would put my stop loss at that point. If the market then pulls back and moves higher again. I would move my stop loss to that point. Market then pulls back again and goes yet higher. I move my stop loss there. So as we are moving higher, I'm moving up in sync with it, and I'm moving my stop loss up with it. We then pull back, and my stop loss would be triggered. And that's what I mean by lower lows if long 
or higher highs if short. There is a video uh, on the lower low higher high theory. Uh, there's, I use short URLs here, so it's jol.to slash question mark 8k, um, or just go search uh, for lower lows on just one lap and you will find the video which you can either view or download to get you an idea of that stop loss. Is it a perfect stop loss? Not by a million miles. Uh, if I had the perfect stop loss by now, I would own a nice little island. Um, actually, now I'd probably just buy Greece, um, and I would be living in Greece and all by myself. Uh, stop losses are not perfect. That, that's not what they offer, unfortunately. Another alternative exit strategy, and this was done by a, a friend of mine who trades it, and he adjusted it. He exits on a breach of the 15-day uh, simple moving average. So he uses that for his in and his out. He says, if we're using that as our secondary trend and the secondary trend is up, stay in it. When the secondary trend reverts to a downtrend and we're in a long trade, then you want to exit. And when I show you some graphs in a moment, we'll look at both of those two different examples of it. So it's an either or. I'm not sure the huge difference over time that either of them would make. Um, and there's a, a, th a third option on the table here which has been uh, suggested by a couple of people who, who use the system. Um, I'll delve into that as well. I'm not terribly comfortable with it, but certainly it's a possibility. Position size, always critically important, and I'm just going to touch on this very briefly. If you go look at, uh, uh, we've got some uh, uh, videos. The 2% rule is what we're talking about. There's a video there which you can go and find the 2% rule. Managing your risk is very much making sure that your position size isn't too large. So I use that 2% rule in that. Uh, quick explanation of 2% rule. It's saying you're entering a position on uh, the top 40 and you buy the, the ETF and the buy price is 29 Rand 50. You work out your stop loss either from moving average or lower lows and that stop loss is at 28.75. It means if you buy at 29.50, stop tight at 28.75, you are going to lose 75 cents per share. That is your risk per share. So how do you determine your quantity? There's 75 cents divided by 2% of portfolio RAND value. So say your portfolio was, I don't know, 100,000 RAND, 2% 2 is 2,000 RAND, you divide your 75 cents into 2,000 RAND, and that tells you how many ETFs to go and buy. So let's get you some examples. So here's the top 40. Uh, let's go first right down to the side down here. So here we had a red moving average. If you look up at the top left up there, you'll see the my three moving averages. The red is the short is the 30, the green is the 60. So my red is above my, my, my green and therefore I'm looking for long trades only. The market moves up through the 15 day moving average and closes at that point there and that then gives me my trigger. Confirmation, next day green. The next day was green so I would have entered the trade at that point there. Then a weird thing happens. Almost every time, I would say three quarters or 80% of the time, I enter a trade in this system, next day we go down. Well, that's just how it is. My stop loss is one of two. Initially, my stop loss is all the way down there because that's my lower low. We pull back and start moving higher. My stop loss gets moved to there, to there, to there, and then to there, and I get stopped tight at that point up there. Not a bad trade, 29.3 to 30, you've made about 4% on that trade. If you had elected to use the 15 uh, moving average as your stop loss, there would have been your exit, um, and you would have exited at that point, which is about an extra 100 points or so. So not massively significant in truth. Let's look at some other examples. So here we had another move up. There was my trigger, but next day we moved down, so didn't confirm, we walk away. Uh, here we had a trigger, next day green, so at that point there it would have entered a trade, my stop loss would have been there, and either I would have triggered on the 15 moving average, or I would have got stopped out at that point there, because let me clear, market came down and back up, my stop loss would have been initially there, would have moved it to there, and I would have got triggered at that point with an entry there, losing trade. Uh, more entries. The red is staying above the green, so I'm staying long. Here is another trigger, but next day is, is down, so didn't confirm. Uh, here's another trigger. Next day is green, so I entered at that point. My stop loss is there, 
and I get stopped out pretty much the next day. Nasty. It happens. Uh, there is not a, a trigger. It just, just, just didn't make it. Sorry, there is a trigger. It made it through the blue, but it didn't confirm because next day was down. And then here again, you can see we've moved. At that point, we've gone up through the moving average. So there was my trigger. There was my entry. There is my stop loss. Market has pulled back and moved higher. I am still in this trade. This is a chart from uh, Monday's close. I don't know if Wednesday's closed. Today we closed a little bit higher. We're probably up about there or so. So at the moment, my situation is that there was my entry. That is my stop loss. And in fact, it still goes across to there. And I'm currently sitting at that point there, more or less. Immediately, what you can see is I've got a large stop loss in place. That's what that stop loss will do to you. It does make it large. If I was using the 15 moving average, I would actually have been stopped out of this trade. And that was a fairly hairy ride to come all the way back down, 600 odd points. But you use your 2% rule, so that wasn't a problem, didn't massively stress the risk. What I'm hoping will happen is that the market has moved higher to there. I'm hoping we'll have a few down days, and then we'll go higher again, and my new stop loss will then be positioned there. Uh, Zafin's asking historical win-loss percentage for the system. Um, it's a little tricky because I changed it, but broadly I'm going to say that it comes in at just under 60%. Um, and then obviously in strong markets, your win-loss ratio, I've had, I've had years where I haven't had a losing trade on the system. In truth, I did you know, only eight or actually I think six trades in 2006. Only did six trades. Everyone made a profit. But then you get years like this one now where you're just getting, you know, the system is currently on the top 40 at break even. Uh, Roger's asking why enter when 15 below 30. Um, Roger, it's 30 and 60 relative to themselves. So the way I do it, I look at 30 and 60, and then I look at 15 relative to price. So the fact, what I first do, and in fact we could remove the blue line, and I, for practical purposes, can't do it. For the practical part, first I look at my red and my green, which is my 15 and 30. They tell me that we're going long only, so that's nice. Then I switch to that. I am therefore entering scenarios you will find when, when the 15 is, is potentially below the 30, and in cases here, even below the 60. Could you add a rule that says you want the 15 to also be above? Yes, you could. In which case, you would have entered that trade down there. Uh, you would still have entered that trade, would have lost you, entered that trade. Um, you wouldn't have entered that trade, so that would have been a no trade, and, that was, and you wouldn't have entered that trade. So I'm not sure if it would have necessarily made a massive difference. But what I like about the question is it's thinking about different ways to do it, and that's absolutely the point. Let's look at the Indy 25. The system has been doing, this index has been doing crazy stuff. So again, my 30 is the red. We can see for this entire chart here, red is above green, so I'm only looking at long trades. Um, there was a break up, closed there, triggered at that point, so I enter my stop. I would have entered there. My stop loss is then positioned down there. Uh, as the market moved, I would have adjusted my stop loss to there and to there. Now at this point, whichever stop loss method you're using, you're getting stopped out. The deep irony is that you got stopped at that point there and immediately you got a buy signal. And that buy signal then stopped you, stopped you out. Depending on the system that you're using, you either got stopped at that point on the 15 or you got stopped, and I can't be sure I'm reading this right, uh, you would have actually got stopped on lower low at that point there. So in this case, the 15 worked much better for you. Uh, there was another entry. There was your, your one day. There's your second day. So there was an entry point stop loss there. If you're entering on the fifth, on exiting on the 15, you would have stopped out at that point. Otherwise, you would have moved your stop loss to there, to there, to there, and you would have got stopped at that point there. Now, the immediate thing we look at this chart here is we say, hang on, there's an entry down there back in December. Uh, at about 28,500 points. And we could still be long at 33,000 points if we'd hung on to it. We could have taken that entire ride. Would have been excellent. Yes. 
And here's the extra caveat which you can do to the system. What you will notice is every time I'm getting stopped out, uh, there was a stop, but it went down, stopped, immediately reversed. There was a stop. Went down, stopped, immediately reversed. If I just clean those lines off, if you're using the 15 day, stop, immediately reverse. Stop, immediately reverse. In a very strong trend, that's unfortunately what happens. Then there's another theory here which says, well, use the 30 day as your stop loss. Okay, but if we go back to this chart here where you weren't making so much money, the 30 day was perhaps a little more painful on you. Uh, not massively so, but it's going to lag, so you're always going to get out at a slightly lower point. The next issue which one says is, well, okay, so let's take this point here. At that exact point there, you're stopped out. Okay. Why don't you say, well, today I stopped out. If we are red tomorrow, I will action it. If we are not red tomorrow, we are green, I ignore it. In other words, a stop loss would need two confirmation days to exit you out. Nice idea, except what happens if the market does this. Let's say that's your stop loss. And the market does that and closes. And you say, nope, I'm on a, a, a two-day stop loss system, so I don't exit on day one. I exit on day two, and the market goes still lower, and you end up getting stopped down there. It's always going to be risk or reward. A couple of questions coming through. Linda's asking if you can use this for Aussie futures. Intuitively, Linda, absolutely you can. Um, I haven't. What you would probably look to do is chart the top 40 index, end of day, but trade it on the Aussie, and you could probably drop it down in, to an intraday system. Uh, which chart am I doing? I'm using uh, end of day, uh, daily chart, and then I then enter at 4.30 in the afternoon. So let's go back to here. At that point there, that close down there was my trigger. Confirmation is the following day at 4.30, if we are green, I will enter. And indeed, following day at 4.30, we green, so I would have entered at that point. Harry's asking, oscillators for confirming the, en the, uh, the entry and exit. Uh, Harry, sure, absolutely, why not? I don't because I, when I say I like things simple, I really, really like things simple. You could certainly throw a MACD or an RSI or something like that in, and you could use that for confirming entries and exits. Absolutely, you can. Um, and Noel's asking, if you don't get entry confirmation the next day, but get it the following day, do you still enter? No, great question. In other words, uh, let me try to think how to draw this. So market goes up, I get my confirmation. So I get my trigger. I'm waiting for a green day, but I get a red day. Next day is a green day. Will I enter? Yes. Two conditions. One, I want that close to be above the previous close still, and I must still be above the 15 moving average. Quick look at Finney. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on them because my time is already uh, escaping on me. Um, but methodology, again, the same. My 30 was above 60 for this entire picture, so I'm looking at longs only. Um, there was a trigger with your confirmation being at that point. My initial stop loss was there, got moved to there, got moved to there, never got triggered. Eventually, it got triggered at that point there. If you were using the 15 moving average, you would have triggered your stop loss there. And then immediately we get another trade. And you can tell in that point there, I got out at 33.4, you would have got out at 34.4. So you made an extra 1,000 points or an extra 3% on the trade. Not insignificant. And in truth, if I hadn't have triggered on that one there, my stop loss just carried on. Did that work? No, still good. I would have got triggered at that point there. We then have another trigger, another confirmation. Entry is there, stop loss is there. Uh, if you're using the 15 day, you stopped at that point. For me, my stop loss goes to there. It then goes to there, and I then get triggered at that point there. And I'm pretty much in a break-even trade, but I need costs. The resi, initially we've got green above red, so we're looking to go long. Um, we would have got an Entry at that point there, stop loss down there, stop loss gets moved to there, to there, uh, to there, would have got stopped out at that point. If you're using the 15, you get stopped out at that point there. You get another move through, you get the trigger, but you don't get the confirmation because the next day is down. What then happens at this point is you see that the red goes below the green, so now we're only looking for short trades. 
no short trades happen until this point here where we get a move down. There's your trigger, but next day was green, so no confirmation. So what we've had on the resi is a move from 57 odd thousand up there down to 48 thousand down there, and we haven't had a single trade. And, and that absolutely going to going to happen from happen from time to time. We traded that move up there, but this down move, which has been fairly nice and juicy, simply hasn't generated a trade for us. We now have that uh, price moving through the 15 day but it's moving up and our focus is down. So what we're actually looking for is if the price comes down, we would then potentially look to enter a short trade. Uh, Ashley, are you able to show an example with end of day candlesticks? Ashley, I don't use candles on this because I don't need the information. Um, I'm not looking for the intraday data which a candlestick gives you. I'm simply looking for the close price so I don't need the candlesticks. Uh, Dylan is asking trading a lower volatility index like SWIX or RAFI. Dylan, sorry, um, brilliant question. Short answer, yes. Uh, long answer, I will crunch that this evening after I'm finished here. Um, I like it. I like it for two reasons, a couple of reasons. One, as you say, lower volatility, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, two, they are chartable, and three, they are tradable, because there's a number of different ETFs that offer uh, the RAFIs and the SWIFTs. I don't know if I would use the ABSA RAFI, but probably certainly the Satrix one, um, and SWIFTs again, such as to a great switch. Dylan, I think that's a great shot. So some risks, because, well, there's always risks in life and even more so in trading. Sideways market. And the biggest problem with the sideways market is not that you start to lose money, it's that you start to lose confidence. And that what happens is you start to not trust the system, then you start to not trade it, and then suddenly a big trade comes and you weren't in the market. And of course you are losing money and that's no fun either. Um, stops can be large. What I mean by this is let's say the market has done that and I enter up here. My stop loss is initially down there. That can be fairly chunky. Now, what I do to manage that, of course, is my 2% rule makes that uh, uh, less of an issue. It means my RAND value at risk remains the same. I said it works in the four indices. My advice is either to trade the top 40 or to trade the three components, Indy, Resi, or Fini or as uh, Dylan has suggested, maybe the, 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 the SWIX or the RAFI. I would probably vote for the SWIX, but uh, SWIX is probably going to be the better to my mind. Don't trade the top 40 and the three underlying indices because then you're duplicating in essence. So either trade the three underlyings um, or trade the top 40 or the SWIX. So quick recap, uh, it's simple. When you're in the swing of things here, yeah, you absolutely can do it in, in, in five minutes a day. Um, absolutely no sweat whatsoever. It really does just become something that becomes completely second nature to you. It's just the three moving averages, uh, nice and easy. Uh, you can bring in indicators, oscillators and the like. Absolutely you can. I haven't, but no reason why you necessarily shouldn't. You're monitoring end of day, and again that leaves you days free, particularly if you've got jobs and the like. I, I moved to this from, from day trading. I, I'd spent uh, 2003, 2004 day trading the market. Uh, I was making money, but I wasn't having any much of a life. So I wanted something that could make me money uh, and generate uh, profits, but by its very nature, be, be lazy. And I actually cribbed a lot of this from the uh, Guppy trading system. If you go Google Guppy trading, he's an Australian. He uses a whole lot more moving averages. I def distilled it down to even less. It doesn't give you many trades. It's going to give you an average of maybe a trade a month. Um, I've gone years where I've had uh, six trades in a year. Um, the point is that it's giving you not many trades. It means the market is strong, and typically less trades means that they are more profitable trades. If it's giving you a lot of trades, it means the market is choppy. Sideways markets, I've said that already repeatedly, worth saying again, in a sideways market, this thing loses money. Uh, as I said, there's more at Ticker Talk. There's a group there. You have to register to, to uh, view it. It needs an email address, a name, a password, and then you can uh, go and view it. Um, you're welcome to throw questions wherever you want, but certainly I put a lot of the questions through there because then we've got a record, as I said, for people who come later. The question I'm going to be asked about in the moment is stats. About a 60% win ratio. Uh, it has averaged since uh, January of 2005, so that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, I've been trading it now seven years. Um, it's given me an average of around 46% per year. The best years have been 
close to 100. Uh, last year wasn't very good. This year is break even. Uh, a question from Nazir, what about costs of entering and exiting? Uh, do they not eat away profits? Uh, Nazir, costs are absolutely an issue. They always are. Um, I'm typically able to enter, because of the cost structure at my broker, uh, I can enter and exit at about 1.7%. Um, that's using straight equity. Uh, which means I need a move of 1.7%. You've then also got spreads, so I typically need a 2.5% move to break even, which is not an insignificant move. Uh, but the point being is that when you get a strong move happening here, you can get into a 15, 20, 25% move in the underlying. Ladies and gents, that is the system. Uh, it, it really is deadly simple. Um, I appreciate that some of you may be baffled. Throw me questions. If you've got a microphone attached, you can raise your hand and I'll activate your microphone. Uh, if it's con totally confusing you, as I said, put questions now. And of course, you can always follow up with questions at a later stage. Uh, Gregory Hewitt, or Hewitt Gregory, thanks. I appreciate that. that you know, there's a lot of wine out there to drink. I don't want to spend my life... Um, day trading. I've, I've done the day trading and I've designed new day trading systems and when I'm in front of my screen I will day trade. What I don't want to have to do is, is to sit in front of my screens. Today I had a, a crazy day. I, had, I was rushing to hospitals and doctors and stuff. Um, and that, you know, I don't want to be a day trader and then I'm doing that and it's like, well, I'm not earning my living. Uh, I'm trying to be lazy here, finding it harder than I thought. Uh, Harry, appreciate it. A uh, question coming through from Susan, is it possible to only trade this on, on uh, ETFs and long only? Uh, Susan, it absolutely is. Um, of course, that means when markets are trending down, you're going to be sitting out. That's not the end of the world. The truth of the matter is that markets spend more time going up than down. It just means that during those down phases in 2008 and into 2009, you would have been sitting on the sidelines. Roger's asking if it would work on Forex on a daily chart. Uh, Roger, my only experience of Forex was a very, very painful and masterly expensive one about 10 or 12 years ago. So offhand, I don't know. I would say the problem might be volatility. Um, but I would then say it's worth, it's worth throwing the averages on, see what it looks like, and maybe giving it a tweak. Certainly worth looking at. I wouldn't discard it out of hand. <laughs> okay, a, a great question uh, uh, coming from Simpiwe. He's saying it, it looks it looks really simple. Okay, Simpiwe, long question. I'm going to paraphrase it. He says, surely trading needs to be difficult. Simpiwe, no. I think that's the trap we fall into. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's a long answer. But psychologically, we are ra well, not psych psychologically, we believe it needs to be hard work. As human beings, we are raised to believe that in order to succeed, we have to work hard. So we get to trading and we think in order to succeed at trading, we need complicated systems, we need complicated structures, and then we will succeed. In truth, trading succeeds when it's simple. Best traders I know have got really, really simple systems. So it really is a case of, to me, trading needs to be about simpleness. We go through that process of, of complicating and then I think we all come back to the simple part. Is just asking if it will work with spread trading. Uh, is there Yes, it absolutely should. I, 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 I've never traded spreads in my life, and I'm trying to think of anything innate about them that would markedly be different. I can't think of any. Uh, I would test it, do some paper trades, but certainly I don't see any reason why not. Question coming through, could it be used in international indices? Uh, yes, it could. Um, I haven't ever looked at it. I, I once was going to start trading it on the FTSE 100. The trick is the FTSE is too close to our index. Uh, the problem with the international, with the U.S. indices and the Asian Eastern indices is simply time zones. Um, so I moved away from that. It's recently been suggested to me that the best European index is the Dow Jones Eurostox 50, which is the biggest 50 companies in Europe. Um, and it's on my list of things to do this year to have a look at implementing this on that index. I would need to trade through a, a European stockbroker, but the time zones would work. That's critically important. Uh, ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through, so I'm going to leave it there. I just want to conclude to say that it, it really is simple, um, but go and test it. Make it your own. Uh, go and do the back testing. 
Uh, Mike is saying, do I need to paper test or just hold the, the rules clearly and trade immediately? Mike, you, you can certainly jump straight in. I know people who have. The, the key thing is, is, is more, will you trust it? Um, and, and short answer, if you trust it, then you can jump in with it. Um, I would, at least the charts I showed you here, maybe go pull them up on your charting package and kind of do what I did. Do the eyeball and make sure that it makes sense to you. Uh, Ashley, will the presentation be available on the website? Yes, it will be up sometime, probably mid-late morning tomorrow, uh, and a confirmation email will go out tomorrow evening with the URL, but it will certainly be at justfinelap.com uh, by mid-morning, worst case, late morning tomorrow. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks all very much for your time. I hope it made sense. I hope you take something from it. Um, and even if it is tweaking it, uh, all the best. Cheers.